Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The heads of the executed French king and queen. One of the most shocking moments in history saw the French king, Louis XVI, being executed on the guillotine in the centre of Paris. The executioner, who performed the job to take off the king's head during the French Revolution, would ensure that his head was taken off cleanly. But then the question came as to what to do with the king's wife, the queen Marie Antoinette. She was left a widow and was imprisoned in tough conditions inside of a Paris prison, until she was brought to trial and was accused of a huge range of scandalous offences. But on the same guillotine, in the same place her husband had been executed on months before, the Queen's head was taken off. It was a time of great fear in France, and the executions of the King and Queen showed the anger that the population had. But in this video, we're going to be looking at the work of one woman who held the heads of the King and Queen after they had been cut off. Madame Tussaud is known today for waxworks, but she would, following the executions, take the heads of the king and queen and cast masks of their executed heads. This is the heads of the executed French king and queen. On the 16th of October 1793 inside of Paris, Marie Antoinette, the queen of France, was executed on the guillotine. Months before, her husband, King Louis XVI, had also met the same fate, and he had been executed on the same device of death. But to many across France, Marie Antoinette was a figure of loathing, and she was a woman who would, whilst people were suffering, rub their poverty in their faces by living a very indulgent lifestyle. But the death of Marie Antoinette was a shocking one. But what happened to her head following the execution? Inside of the concierge, Marie Antoinette's fall from grace was huge. She was held inside of a prison, and the final 11 weeks of her life were spent inside of this cell. She was a woman who was Austrian, and an Austrian princess. But in the years before her death, she embraced great frivolity of the French royal court. She would become queen four years after coming to France. She was 18, and was frustrated by the fact her husband had opposite tastes. But Marie would, at court, spend her time gambling, partying and buying lavish gifts and items, and she became known as Madame Deficit. But she did, did have a good heart, and she would adopt some poor children. But despite having a soft heart, she was considered a scapegoat for the problems across the nation. Millions of people were suffering, and the diamond necklace affair made things worse. A countess tricked a cardinal into buying a hugely expensive necklace on the Queen's behalf, and many believed Marie tried to get her hands on the necklace without paying for it, and this ruined her reputation. But the French Revolution would come, and the French rose up, storming the Bastille and taking up arms, and they would riot inside of many major cities over the price of bread, and they would march to the gates of Versailles. The royal couple wouldn't be officially arrested until June of 1791, when they tried to flee to Austria, controlled Netherlands. The royal family were held in the temple, and France declared a republic. This was an end to the monarchy which had ruled for almost 1,000 years in the country. But in the January of 1793, King Louis XVI was sentenced to death for treason against the state and the French people. He was allowed to spend some time with his family before he was executed in front of a huge crowd in Paris. But Marie Antoinette, following her husband's death, was left in prison, and she would be transferred to the concierge months before her death, which became known as the antechamber to the guillotine and she would be held for two months before she was placed on trial. She was 37 years old, and her hair was white and her skin was pale. She was subjected to a 36-hour trial with 18-hour days, but huge accusations, including incest, were levelled against the Queen, and Marie would deny these. However, these accusations shocked the courtroom. She was graceful in court, but it did not save her from the executioner's block. In the hours of the 16th of October, 1793, she was found guilty of high treason. 
depletion of the national treasury and conspiracy against the security of the state. Shortly before her execution at the Palace de la Revolution, most of the Queen's white hair was cut off. At 12.15pm, she walked onto the scaffold to greet Charles Henry Sampson, her executioner, who had also took the life and head of her husband, the King, months before. He was in a black mask, and he probably never believed that he would have executed the Queen of France, who was his former employer. Marie was dressed in white, and she accidentally stepped on the executioner's foot, and she whispered to him, Pardon me, sir, I did not mean to. And this was her final word. Quickly, Sansom strapped her to the wooden board and slid Marie under the blade before he released it. Her head was taken off in one quick blow. Sanson then held up her head and declared, Viva la République! But, following her execution, Marie Antoinette's remains were taken around half a mile north and they were taken to the graveyard behind the Church of Madeleine. However, at the time, the gravediggers, who had been burying many victims of the guillotine, were taking a lunch break, and whilst the Queen's remains were about to be interred, this allowed Madame Tussaud to then sneak in and take a plaster death mask and cast of her head. Following this, her body was then thrown into an unmarked grave, and this particular cemetery would be filled the following year by enemies of the Revolution. Marie Antoinette then had her head, it's believed, also thrown inside of this unmarked grave. But we know that Marie's body was exhumed on the 18th of January 1815, and then her remains were given a Christian burial of the royal remains in the necrophilus of the French kings at the Basilia of St. Denis. But from her death mask, Marie Antoinette would be brought back to life by Madame Tussaud, who utilised the plaster cast to make a model of her head, and it would show the French queen with short hair and with her eyes closed and her lips also pursed together with a mask on her face. This is the closest we have of the Queen of France's head and what it looked like following execution. Marie Antoinette, to many people, was a symbol of what was wrong with the old regime and with the monarch of France. It was a royal family that placed further financial problems onto the nation, and Marie was used as a scapegoat for this. She was a woman who had a taste for the finer things in life, and she spent a huge amount of money on renovating royal palaces with the best furniture from across Europe. But she would brutally lose her head on the guillotine, like thousands of other people and her husband would, during the French Revolution. Those who witnessed her execution would not forget the moment they saw the French Queen lose her head. The French Revolution was a pivotal moment in history, as the civilian population around the country rose up and sought to abolish their monarchy. No one would have anticipated the bloodshed that occurred after, as the reign of terror emerged across France with around 17,000 people being led to the guillotine inside of different cities and towns. Dozens a day were being executed as figures such as Robespierre wanted to stomp out every piece of the monarchist sympathy as they could, but this was in the aftermath of the execution of the French king, Louis XVI, and he was a king who was not perfect, and he attracted a huge amount of hatred and criticism from his subjects. But Louis XVI would be led to the guillotine himself, where an executioner took his head clean off. But following his death, a mould of his head would be cast, and this was done by the infamous Madame Tussaud, and it shows a rather haunting image of the king in his final moments. King Louis XVI was the last king of France, and along with his wife Marie Antoinette the Queen, the royal couple attracted a huge degree of criticism. Whilst the French people were starving due to the rising prices of bread, the monarchy was spending lavish sums of money on furniture, parties, and they were gambling away huge amounts of the treasury. Because of the anger, revolution broke out with key events such as the storming of the Bastille, destabilising the monarchy, and eventually the king and queen and royal family were taken into custody. There have been conversations across Europe regarding saving them, 
but the increasing tension towards them saw the king brought to trial. He was forced to abolish the monarchy and France became a republic. Louis was himself brought to trial and he would be brought from the temple prison to stand before the national convention. He was accused of high treason and crimes against the state and on the 15th of January 1793, 721 deputies and members of the convention voted on what to do with him. 693 declared that he was guilty. But the men then had to decide what to do with the king. 361 of them voted for execution, and Louis XVI was condemned to death by one single vote. The immediate execution of the king was then arranged, and this would be the final decision. His execution took place on the 21st of January 1793. On the day, Louis woke up early in the morning, his valet helped him dress, and he then visited an Irish priest to make his confession. He would hear his last mass and receive communion, but Louis was advised to not see his family, as it would be too tough. He then confided his final wishes to the priest, that the royal seal was to go to the Dauphin, and that his wife the Queen should receive his wedding ring. Following the blessing, he went to meet the commander of the guard. In the second court, a green carriage was waiting for him, and he then sat in it along with the priest and two guards who sat opposite. The carriage then left the temple at 9am, and for over an hour, the carriage, which was led by drummers, would process to the place of execution. The drummers played to drown out the sound of any support, and the route to the guillotine was lined by 80,000 soldiers of the National Guard. They were also escorted by cavalry soldiers with their sabres drawn. One supporter of the royal family had gathered a force of 300 men in the neighbourhood of Rue de Cleary. However, he was then discouraged as the men changed their support. At ten o'clock, the carriage carrying the king emerged at the place de la Revolution and went towards an area where the scaffold had been erected, where the guillotine was set upon. The guillotine, as a device, was created to execute people as quickly as possible, and the king would give his approval to this years before, but he would never have imagined that his royal patronage would lead him to losing his head on the device. In the square were many guards who surrounded the scaffold with guns, and a crowd carrying pikes and bayonets were also found. His confessor wrote of the journey, The path leading to the scaffold was extremely rough and difficult to pass. The king was obliged to lean on my arm, and from the slowness with which he proceeded, I feared for a moment that his courage might fail. But what was my astonishment when, arrived at the last step, I felt that he suddenly let go of my arm, and I saw him cross with a firm foot the breadth of the whole scaffold, silenced by his look alone, fifteen or twenty drums that were placed opposite to me, and in a voice so loud that it must have been heard at the Pont Tournant. I heard him pronounce distinctly these memorable words, I die innocent of all the crimes laid to my charge. I pardon those who have occasioned my death, and I pray to God that the blood you are going to shed may never be visited on France. Louis XVI then disembarked his carriage and coach, and he was then approached by the executioner, Charles Henry Sansom, who would perform the job. He would, to begin with, not allow the executioner and his assistant to bind his hands together and tie them, but he would then give over when Sansom suggested using a handkerchief rather than a rope. The executioner's men then quickly cut his hair and removed the collar of his shirt to ensure that nothing got snagged in the blade of the guillotine that would prevent a clean cut. He was then led up the scaffold... Whilst on it, he shouted to the crowd and proclaimed that he was innocent, but then a drum roll was ordered to drown out the final sentences and send him towards his death. The executioners then fastened the king to the guillotine bench, and they then positioned this beneath the device to hold it into place. Then, rather rapidly, the blade was released and the king's head was taken off. One eyewitness stated that the blade did not sever the neck, but due to a misalignment, the blade went straight through the back of his skull and into his jaw, 
but then Samson grabbed the severed head from the basket, which it fell into, and showed it to the crowd as the people rushed forwards to dip their handkerchiefs in the blood of the deceased former king. The executioner would later state of the execution. Arriving at the foot of the guillotine, Louis XVI looked for a moment at the instruments of his execution and asked Samson why the drums had stopped beating. He came forwards to speak, but they were shouts to the executioners to get on with their work. As he was strapped down, he exclaimed, My people, I die innocent. Then, turning towards his executioner, Louis XVI declared, Gentlemen, I am innocent of everything of which I am accused. I hope that my blood may cement the good fortune of the French. The blade fell. It was 10.22am. One of the assistants of Sansom showed the head of Louis XVI to the people, whereupon a huge cry of Viva la Nation, Viva la République, arose and an artillery salute rang out, which reached the ears of the imprisoned royal family. Another witness would state, here are some unknown details. The executioners numbered four, two only performed the execution. The third stayed at the foot of the ladder, and the fourth was on the wagon which was to convey the king's body to the Madeleine Cemetery, and which was waiting a few feet from the scaffold. The executioner wore breeches, coats in the French style, as a revolution had modified it, and three cornered hats with enormous tricolour cockades. They executed the king with their hats on, and it was without taking his hat off that Sansom, seizing by the hair the severed head of Louis the Sixteenth, showed it to the people, and for a few moments let the blood from it trickle upon the scaffold. But then after the execution, at some point, Marie Tussaud, or Madame Tussaud, was then employed to make a death mask or whole body cast of the executed king, Louis the Sixteenth. She would also do the same for Marie Antoinette and other prominent French politicians, and she would have done this before his body was interred. This is interesting, as the king's remains were immediately transported to the Church of Madeleine, as he was not allowed to be buried alongside his father. He was buried, in a sense, as a commoner, but at some point Madame Tussaud would have had her hands on the head of the dead king. This would have been done possibly whilst he was still on the scaffold, or in the seconds after, or inside of the cart, when his remains were taken to the church. With Marie Antoinette, she would have to sneak into the graveyard to do this, but the head crafted of King Louis the Sixteenth would show him in his final seconds and the countenance of the king following the blade falling. It was said of his burial, Arriving at the cemetery, I called for silence. A detachment of gendarmes showed us the body. It was clothed in a white vest and grey silk breeches with matching stockings. We chanted vespers and the service for the dead. Impersonance of an executive order, the body lying in its open coffin was thrown onto a bed of quicklime at the bottom of the pit and covered by earth, the whole being firmly and thoroughly tamped down. Louis the Sixteenth's head was placed at his feet. But King Louis the Sixteenth's death was a momentous moment in history, as it signalled the intent of the French Revolution. His wife would also lose her head on the guillotine, but so would thousands more who supported the monarchy. It was a brutal time across the land, and those who would witness executions would see the streets of cities and towns running red with the blood of the victims. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.